Welcome, Welcome everybody, everybody to the Real, real, real World Experience, experience. The podcast, the podcast for creative individuals from all walks of life. We talk to rap, 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 rap politicians, talk, 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 you name it. Maintain and entertain, entertain, entertain our best show, 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 I'm your host, DP, and today we welcome a special guest. He is known throughout Key West, all throughout South Florida, Miami-Dade County, and all up throughout Florida. A great barber, as well as a young rap artist coming up through the ranks. I'm an entrepreneur for sure. Welcome, Risky Blunt. How you doing today, Risky? Yes, sir. Chilling, man. Uh, It's been a beautiful day. You know, everyone in the whole world is having a hard time right now all together at the same time, but still got to make the light out of it. You feel me? Most definitely. Most definitely do. It's, uh, you know, things are different nowadays. You know, it's uh, it's definitely a weird day and age, man. You don't know how to act when you go outside and whatnot. And, you know, you just want to be safe as you can. And uh, so what uh, what do you got going on? So I got a... Uh... Well, wait, wait. If you don't know people, me, yeah. For the people yeah, that don't, don't know, know me you, really quick. My name is Risky on Instagram, R I S K Y. You can look me up on all platforms as Risky Blunt, R I S K Y B L U N T. I've been working now for like two and a half years on this music tip, and um, it's going great, man. Uh, I got a deluxe album on the way. Uh, you know, the deluxe is the new thing now. So like. I got my, my deluxe album for my last tape. My last tape had eight tracks on it. The deluxe got 26. And um, what is we the got, meaning of deluxe album? So, like, you know how you go to Wendy's right now, right? And you get yourself a cheeseburger, right? Mm-hmm. But then you get the deluxe cheeseburger. So, or like you go to Chick fil A, you got a chicken sandwich, but then you got the spicy chicken deluxe. You know what I'm saying? It come with the, with the tomato on there, the lettuce on there, the onions. The sauce, you gotta have the sauce, you know what I'm saying? So you just got a lot more tracks on there. So I got um I got remastered tracks, remixed tracks basically. So I got six brand new tracks. I got some features on it too, some big features on it. Um and it's gonna be crazy. I got three visuals coming. More than that though, I got three visualizers coming, I got three videos coming, and I got a couple more videos that still need to be shot by you coming. And all so, of this is coming off of what album? This is on Life's Risky, or Nothing to Prove, Life's Risky. And that Deluxe. hasn't come out just yet. It hasn't come out yet, but Nothing to Prove has come out, and Life's Risky has come out. So what I did is I got my four of my favorite songs on both those albums. I remixed and remastered them. So basically, like, the whole song's different now. I got a different intro on it, maybe some different, like, you know what I mean, verses. The beats changed up, like, drops are different on it. And um, I brought them back to life, basically, on this deluxe. And then I also added uh, six new tracks. So that's going to be crazy. That's nothing to prove Life's Risky Deluxe. That's coming 10, 10, 20, 20. So um, how did you first get into rap? I got into rap just, uh, you know, since way, 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 way back. Like, uh, just through, like, you know, going to Miami with my pops and being in music videos. I've been in... um. Strictly Business Records, I worked with Red Eyes. If you don't know who Red Eyes is, Red Eyes works with Young Thug, works with Lil Wayne, works with all the Rich Gang, all of those people. Uh, back in the day with my pops, and um, I was like, I, I, I was like six years old in music videos, you know what I mean? Throwing up Cuban flags and stuff like that. And um, I just always had like a passion for it. I always like, I would rap Nas, Mas Dev, Rakim. Um, Mob Deep, all that, all that in the car with my pops, you feel me? It's just like my whole life, you know? And I grew up in a barbershop around older people. So like I had like this different like perspective of like what hip hop was, you know what I'm saying? And like you can have fun with hip hop, but then you can also like change someone's whole life with hip hop, you know what I mean? Like you can make someone not feel nothing, but then you can make someone feel everything, you know what I mean? Like just off like the words, you know what I mean? That you put on the, on the, on the track, you know what I'm saying? Like, you got people like J. Cole who, like, you listen to him and you might start crying, you feel me, while you're saying his bars, you feel me, because you really feel that. And then you got people like Uzi Vert where you don't got a care in the world, you just going hard, you feel me, and you just having a great time, you know what I mean? So it's just, like, there's a whole 
whole lot to rap that like inspired me, you know? And I've always been an artist too, like when it comes to like cutting hair, like Zaytoven, for instance, one of the best producers in the whole game, he's a barber. I mean, that's how he got into it. Uh, that opened up a lot of avenues for him, you know? When you're a barber, you network, you know you know how to talk to people, you know how to go out and reach out and, and, and not be scared to be like, hey, yo, my name's Risky, uh, nice to meet you, you know? Like, and that that's one thing right there that like really opened a lot of doors for me. Like I've met some big people in the game already that like have like been connecting dots for me and stuff like that. And I've been on big shows. I've opened up for NLE Chopper, opened up for Cantu. I've, I did shows in California and LA, opening up for Stephen Cannon and Brain Bakery. If you don't know Brain, Brain Bakery is like, I've been doing all types of stuff. You know what I'm saying? Going on tours all over Florida, doing Wynwood tours, doing shows all over, all over, uh, all over Wynwood, you know, like, and, and really like, that's what, it is, you know what I'm saying? Like, you can't be scared to talk to people and, and, and put your face out there, you know what I'm saying? Because that's all you got, really. And, and and you can't say things to the people that you can't, like, come through with, you know, too. So, like, if you're in this game, you got to understand that, like, they're going to pull your card, you know what I'm saying? So, like, if you're a rapper and, like, you're going to all these studios and you're meeting all these people and you're just going to the studios and you're just paying and you're not meeting anybody or introducing yourself no more, they're going to treat you like a check. They're going to treat you like a dollar sign because that's what you are. You're keeping their business open and operating, you get what I'm saying, by going in there and making music. But when you actually put forth the effort to be like, hey, yo, what's up? Hey, man, you're the owner of this studio. Um, I'm a rapper. My name is Risky, but I'm also a barber. You know, I could do your beard. You know what I'm saying? Like, and then why you, I, I, I made my niche right there. You know what I'm saying? Now I'm his barber now. I'm talking to him and we're making plans and making moves and, and I'm proceeding with like, you know what I mean? Like goals, like I'll make, yo, you know, like it would be dope if like you came down with me to the keys and we brought your artist and like he, and I opened up for your artist and we brought him down to the keys. And like, that's what I did with young Simi. You see what I'm saying? But my, that was a little bit different, like in the way that like my boy uh, Jesse, shout out Jay Mula, like actually grew up with Young Simi, actually knows Young Simi, actually was at parties with Young Simi and Dad. You know what I mean? Like vibing with Simi, vibing with Mo, vibing with people that we know. You know what I'm saying? So it's like you gotta you gotta make your way. You know what I mean? You see your avenues, you choose what you want to do, really. So that's how I got into music. You know, just being young, being a barber. All that. It's a lot, man. <laughs> it's a lot. It's a whole lot. Are those some of the people that inspired you, like uh, like J. Cole and, uh, you know, you, I think you said Lil Uzi Vert. Uh, yeah. Um, who are some of the people that inspired you, So, like, as a youth, you know, become a rapper, you know, like into West Coast, East Coast, South Florida? So, um, it's crazy. I'm, I'm, I was most inspired, like, with my music, like... By Kid Cudi. Kid Cudi. So like what's, Kid what's Cudi comes his from. Biggest songs? I, uh, you got Day and Night, Man on the Moon. Day and Night. You yeah, got Man on the Moon it, One yeah. and Two. You got yeah, um, Just What I Am, which is my favorite song by him. But like right now, Day um, uh, <laughs> currently like the artists I'm most inspired by right now. You know what I mean? That are like, you know, well, shit. Kid Cudi's doing a lot of shit right now. You yeah. got a song with him and Eminem called oh, uh, yeah. called uh, what's it called again? It's like uh, Slim Shady meets The Razor or something like that. I can't remember. I mean, Put in the comments too. if you know the name of the song. I forgot. I heard it a bunch of times already, though. Yeah. And, um, like, you know, Kid Cudi inspired Travis Scott, you know? Yeah. Like, he literally named himself Scott because Kid Cudi's Scott. name is Scott. Yeah, I've been so, to like, Travis Scott concert, man. He's it's crazy. He turns up. Boy. And, um, but rappers that inspire me the most, like, on one hand, Kid Cudi, J. Cole, Nas, Lil Uzi Vert. Lil Uzi. Straight yeah, up. Yeah, Just like the vibes. Like, yeah, wow. Going for the vibes and like The weekend. The weekend. The weekend. I don't really know much about Roddy the Rich, too. A He's a new rapper. Yeah, right. I know. And I've only heard a few songs about from him as well. I need to get more into it, man. I'm older now, though, man. So, you know, I kind of, you know, I don't really be into that, man. Like, I listen to music and stuff, man. But now I'm more into like, you know, storytelling and whatnot, movies and Got trying you. to learn that, man. That's my passion, man. So, um, like, like around what age did you get like real? If I seem like a little bit tired, I just ran like three miles and drove a big pine. So, you know, don't mind me, but I am a little bit tired. That's right real, now. man. Work. Right yeah, here. but um, 
like around what age did you feel like you were getting real serious about it? Because I know one thing that people don't know about you is that you like was really into jujitsu real heavy, and that like uh you know you was like number one. I know you won some tournaments and stuff like that, man. Yeah. Um, but when did, because you kind of like got out of that. You ain't much into that as much no more. And you got serious more about rap. When did that occur? So, all right. So I was doing jujitsu since you're talking about sports. I did sports my whole life, really. Um, and then I had a bunch of concussions, like skateboarding, uh, football, shit. And uh, my literally doctor told me like yo you can't be hitting your head no more so i was like all right you know and i did jujitsu for a little bit after that all right i did jujitsu you know. for a little bit after that you know and, and i've always loved rap and it was something that like when you're younger you're kind of like second guess doing it almost you know what i mean like at first but then like i would say being in the barbershop and just like talking to a bunch of older people and like just seeing the whole horizon like I've talked to people who are poor, people who are rich, people who are lawyers, people who are photographers, people who are gangsters, people who are police officers, people who are everything, you know what I mean? A different tax bracket, like everything. So I have like a different outlook on everything. And like, I really believe that like you can do anything you put your mind to. You know, I did an interview on Marathon with Bert Perez mm -hmm. not long ago, man. He was telling me, you know, how do all those guys get along? You know, they got like about five or six of them Mm. that rap together man and I, I feel like that's an amazing thing when I watch his videos and I see all the people that get along like that it's an energy you know what I mean it's a collective energy mm. they all feeding off each other and I think that's what you know we should be doing down here Key West is a small island man all that beefing yeah, and shit gotta, that shit sucks man you gotta walk outside you gotta remember wear, too though the slippers you gotta always be in sneakers cause uh -huh. Gotta be ready, man. <laughs> yeah, I remember though, you know what I mean? Like, they're all boys. You know what I'm saying? So it's different. Like, everyone down here ain't really, like, all boys. Like, we ain't all grow up together, like, like close. You know what I mean? So it's a little different. Like, they all went to school together. They all cool. They all chilled every day together. They all, you know what I'm saying? And, like, it's, it's different. You know what I mean? Like, just in the fact that, like, everyone down here, you know what I'm saying? I, I personally, like, I've... I like I've tried to do that. Like I've gotten all the artists together on every one of my shows. I have brought I did the Island Ox battle, right? I did the Island Ox battle. It was sixteen artists from the whole keys at the at the Island Ox battle. There was actually like five more that showed up late and signed in late to perform. So we had like twenty some artists at the keys that performed. We even have people from Miami come. You know what I'm saying? And um, that was a big thing. That wasn't even about me. That was for all the artists. Like, I didn't even, I did like one song and I just performed it like to perform. But uh, one of the artists there won 300 bucks. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, that's definitely, and, you uh, know, it's something, something better than that. And nothing, uh, I'm just, you know, I, I've, I've done, I've already done over 30 yeah, shows, over 40 you shows. You know what I mean? with like, I did a cipher. I, sick, not, no, did, that's, did, I'm talking that. about. Like, okay, boom, you got to have that beat looping, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And then each artist, you know what I'm saying, get on that same song, like six of them. Yeah, but the thing is, man, with that, it just... I don't know why I got that number in my head, six. I'm going to tell you, know, you right so now, the thing, the problem right is, bro, the problem is, is that everyone, instead of wanting to just all be raw and like, damn, I'm happy you winning, you know what I'm saying? I'm happy you're doing your thing with a pictures and stuff like that but are other photographers happy you doing it well you know, not really right no not all a, of them. A lot, some of them are some of them are. i mean the thing about the photographer world you know like i wasn't accepted when i got into it but you know it kind of made me who i am because if not then i would have been following other, other people, people exactly you know and, and instead you know, you know i had to find myself you know and what so I mean? and so what, I, what i'm saying is like you got a lot of artists you know what i'm saying that instead of work, worrying about bettering themselves, they're worried about what you're doing and they're mad that you're doing what you're doing. So my, my point is, is like, I've always been the type of person that I've been worried about myself. Yeah, I'm the same way. And about bettering myself and about being better than my last video. Yeah, I never and about care my, about nobody you, else. No, like, I, I care like about my that, family. I know what you mean. But not I care like about my what family. people think about me and shit. I don't care about that. I'm, nah, I'm exactly. not in my world. There's so. a reason why they're talking about you. Yeah, exactly. You see what I'm like, saying? Like, you're something right. I, you know they losing because I don't I'm not having a thought about them. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? I ain't thinking about. Nah, them. you don't need to though. Nah, I gotta think to. about what the hell I'm doing. Exactly. I just want to get better. 
That's it. That's and be the best me possible. You know it. what I'm saying? I ain't competing with no one down here. I'm competing with J. Cole and Lil Uzi. And like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it's just a whole different like mindset. You know, I'm thinking globally. Like I got people in Nigeria that message me, yo, you're my big brother. I got people from Europe, people from all over the states, everywhere. I'm talking about Texas, New York, Dakota, here, California, all over California. <laughs> Wait, say Alaska. Alaska, yeah. I got people in Canada, people in Europe, people all over the UK, people in Spain, people like that really like love my music and really love what I'm doing and really care about what I'm doing. And so I have my fan base. And as long as I have my fan base, I really don't care what anyone thinks about my music because it, I cater to my people that actually love what I'm doing. You know what I'm saying? So... I can make, I have over 50 songs out right now. You can listen right now and you'll be listening till you get to Tallahassee probably. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you listen to my music, you can listen for a long time. You know what I'm saying? Like, and that's because I work, bro. Like, I feel like a lot of artists, you know what I mean? They don't understand you got to invest in what you're doing. You have a business you're trying to start, what do you do? You invest in it. You know what I mean? You get it right. You get it open. You get it looking nice. You polish everything. You clean it. You know what I mean? You run it like a business. Like if you take in your business like a joke, what's going to happen? You're going to close your doors and it ain't going to work out because you're taking your business as a joke. You know what I mean? Like my music is serious. I'm, it's not a joke. Like it's serious. The same way photography is serious for you, same way cutting hair is serious to me. You know what I'm saying? It's a business. Like. My music, I grab money, I invest into it, I get a plan, I get a goal, I write on a little whiteboard, I write on my notes on my phone, and I execute. And and that's what I do on everything. It's always bam, 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 bam. Like it's never like, oh, I'm gonna just put it on SoundCloud. Like Where did you get that from? Where did you get that like um like that business side? You get that from your dad? I got that from working in the barbershop. Yeah. So I, was I that mean more I guess from that your dad, I guess that, that like your, your mom? I guess in a way it like comes from but well both of them. They're really both they're like, both like super business into like oriented. business and stuff like that. That's so good. um but I got it mostly like just from talking to people, like knowing what I want and what I don't want. And 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 I've seen a lot of successful people and a lot of unsuccessful people and I've learned what successful people do. Just from talking to them on a daily day day to day basis at the barbershop, I learned what to not and what not to do from people who do wrong. You know what I'm saying? And uh, mess up. You know what I'm saying? So, if you want something, you know what it takes to get there. Definitely. But if you don't do what it takes to get there, you ain't gonna get there. I promise you. It's like if you know you gotta walk from here to Big Copper, right? And you don't get yourself a couple bottles of water before you go, you ain't gonna make it there. Cause shit, I'll make it. Let's talk about the uh, bad bunny shit, man. A bad bunny shit, huh? Yeah, That's what we're man. Talking about. Yeah, let's get into it, man. It's like, um, what happened there, you know? So, what's crazy is, you know what I'm saying? Um, if I come to you, right, and you made, let's say, a video I liked, right, for someone else, though, and they paid you 200 for it, but I gave you 10 bands for it, you gonna do the same video for me? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, uh, that's kind of sort of like part of it and then like the other thing is is like you know make sure you sign in papers bro like unless unless like you know dude or something you know he ain't gonna sell it or you you gonna make him delete his file or something because like bro like they'll what take your stuff man? quick so For like people that don't so know. like i got my beat from somebody right mm -hmm. and i i bought it right but he bought it like for more money you know what I'm okay, so, so but you bought okay, so you bought a beat from somebody, but you didn't buy you know the rights. Saying? So no, what, so legally what I, they could do whatever the fuck they want with it. So I bought the beat, right? So let's say it's me and you, right? You my dog. Yeah, we cool. You know what I mean? I can trust you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's how I felt with the person I bought the beat from. You know what I'm saying? They gave me the beat for X amount of dollars, and he came in with his. Oh, bag yeah. with his big money, bag yeah. <laughs> and he's bought the same beat and used the same beat it was a good beat um now as far as the cover art you know what i'm saying the thing that got me is like damn you got my beat right okay you got the beat it's easy to hit a producer up pay more get the beat whatever you know what i'm saying it's bad bunny i'm honored by that you yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah. how is it that you have right the let's say he all right so let's say he did do the third eye thing forever or whatever he never had a cover with the third eye like on his head. He only had a black background with a little eye on it. 
Like he never did that. Like I had that out for a year and a half prior to him having the same. He literally got the the clone stamp on <laughs> phone, on on Photoshop and literally clone stamped the eye on his forehead just like I did, like you know, on Photoshop. You know what I'm saying? Like the exact same thing on his face and like the cover is super similar and like you feel it's just like you like, might have seen your shit. Like well, well, you know what's like... crazy too is two people that worked in the same area I was working in and worked on my album and also like had to do with his album, like were there for the whole process of his album, like literally like post my stuff and do all that and like they work with him. So like it's easy to just like see it and it look like a good idea and be like, damn, you know, I, I got this big fan base. Like I can just take yeah, a smaller hurts, artist's yeah. idea it and do like it. Taking some shots, you know what so I'm hard. saying? But the thing is, is like at the same time, I just know my idea was a great idea. I mean, it'd be nice if he could say your name, though. You know, yeah. I mean, go ahead, give, like, give, anything, give me a little but blessing. It's not, and like, and like <laughs> even a bunch of, bro, like I woke up in the morning to like 100 people, like 100 notifications, like, bing, 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 <laughs> bing, bad bunny stole your shit. Bing, 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 bad bunny stole your shit. You know what I'm saying? Like people calling me, waking me up, like texting me, Breezy from CMG, texting me, calling me, yo, he stole your shit. Like, my people and then people I work with, like, oh, I'm honored to be able to be a part of uh Bad Bunny's album and this and that and all this stuff. And like, bro, they did like like I think it was eight tracks out of twenty on his album. Yeah. So like it's not I'm not saying that they did yeah. show him my things, but I think he could have easily saw what I did on their stuff, you know what I mean? Or whatever, and like thought it was a good idea. Yeah, what can you do? You, you know what I'm saying? Flattered, you know? But you know what it is, though? I'm working, and I got a better album coming, and I actually made a remix to that song, and like it's the same song. That same changed, song? Changed everything about it. So y'all going back and forth with and that song. I'm going to drop it again. It was with, so hard. you come with another one? Oh, man. <laughs> it's whatever. And, um, no, but I got a whole bunch of stuff like, oh, coming, man. Oh, you dropped another one? I'm going to drop it again, too. Yeah, and sure. that went crazy. Like Everybody was talking about that for a little minute. That kind of like... Hype my buzz up a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's a nice little controversial, you know? yeah. like controversial topic thing that like happening, and like people could like be like, "Damn, it's crazy why he's that," and like uh, take his shit, you know. And like, bro, like, uh, I literally had so many people actually going on Bad Bunny's things and like, "Oh, you stole at Risky's uh, thing." Uh, a song and his cover art. Like, what's wrong with you? How can you do that and not credit the artist? And da da da. And like, it's just, it's a lot, man, you know? And like, I'm not even like gonna say he did or he didn't, you know what I'm saying? But it's just like, how is it like, there's like three coincidences, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Like, just, oh no, it's just like this and this and this, the same album, like somehow you get the same beat, the same cover out, the same cover art and the same ad libs on the same album. Like, like, yeah. it was just crazy, bro. And like, and he recorded the, sh the 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 album at the same studio, bro. Yeah, shout out yeah, to Big Master, shout out to Rebel, and my boys. But let's get into something of more current times. You know, you recently got married. You understand? Like, um, how did that come about? How did you know right. she was the one? We gonna get into that? Yes, sir. All right. So I was just at the barbershop one day. You know, I cut her hair one time before, but ring, 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 ring. I'm like, all right, hello. Stop out of phase. She's like, hey, this is Jeannie. I was like, I know. <laughs> I just knew her voice, so I know I call her brother-in-law. And um, and she's like, oh, I need a haircut today, da da da. She pulls up after work, walks in, start cutting her hair. And we just had like an amazing conversation, bro. Like a beautiful conversation. And like, you normally don't just meet a girl and like have a real humble down to earth amazing conversation like you don't really like it's usually it's like on some game stuff or like you know like who did this and nah, that now we're like talking about real life stuff you know what i'm saying and like i like real stuff you know what i'm saying like i like real like substance and like i like you know what i mean different you know what i mean like she's different she's from alaska we from key west so she from way over here we from way down here you know what I'm saying? So that just like right there is like a yin and yang type of deal. You know what I'm saying? She know like the whole opposite side of the United States. To, you know what I mean? So actually, she paid me $50 for that haircut. <laughs> you something <laughs> My else, first man. haircut, or second haircut I did on her. Don't make it no bad, guy. And um, 
I was like, damn, you know, she must like me. She made me $50 for a haircut. Yeah. And uh, I gave her a real good haircut, though. It was nice. And uh, it was the best haircut she ever got because she ain't never been cut by a barber until she got cut with me. So, uh, yeah. Um, and then we had, uh, you know, I asked her what she was doing. Like, she wanted to hang out and stuff. Yeah, I was single for a day. Yeah. Yeah, so, like, this was the second. And I was drunk and broke up with my ex on the first. And, and so the next day I went to life. work, right? And it was a Tuesday, I believe, right? Was, yeah, right? Was it Tuesday? After after the first? Is yeah. the first of Monday? I don't know. I don't know. Whatever day it was after day. the first was the day that she came and got a haircut, which was the second, obviously. I don't know what day of the week it was, but it was the best day of my life because yeah, I met right. the woman I'm with for the rest of my life, you know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. That's why I married her. You know, we like right off the bat, like we were like, yo, we're going to be best friends. We're going to chill. We're going to have crazy sex everywhere. <laughs> we want, you know what I mean? We're going to go... We're going to travel the world, see things, you know what I'm saying? And and just and just be friends and just have fun and just love each other for, like, who we are, you know what I'm saying? And not really, like, like just experience things. And then, like, slowly, like, after that, like, we, like, chilled for, like, a week, went to Miami and stuff. And, like, then, like, we just knew. We were like, damn, like, this is too real. Like, how, like, we just so real with each other. Like, it's, like, almost, like, meant to happen. Like, how you, like, go from all the way over here, all the way down here, and then, like, just me, me, we, like, vibe so, like, crazy, you know what I mean? Like, it was, it was, it was awesome. It was awesome. Keep checking it. So, yeah, I'm married now. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's on the finger. Yeah, <laughs> You know, and things ain't things been up and down, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, like you got coronavirus. You know what I'm saying? Um, I got married. You know what I'm saying? Like right before, it's like, you know what I mean? Imagine getting married and then it's like, oh my god, the whole world's over. And then like, find out, you know what I mean? About to have a baby, you know? And then like, where everything that's going on, that's crazy. You know what I'm saying? Like. God decides to take that from you too, you know what I'm saying? I found out three days after I got married that I lost my child, you know? And uh, I took that pretty hard, you know what I mean? Um, How did you deal with that stress? I I put in the music, bro. I worked. Put in the music and worked. And like, I took a couple days just to like, sleep and smoke a little bit and just vibe and just like, get my mind right. You know what I mean? Deal with it, like go through it. But then after that, it was back to the grind, you know? Like, no stopping, no sleep. Can't do sleep for nothing right now, especially, like, with everything that's going on. Like, it's already that much harder to, like, do what we already need to do, you know what I'm saying? To let something, like, stop you, you know what I mean? Like, I lost so many friends, bro, recently. Yeah. Like, so many. Like, people just dropping like flies, bro. I just think it's a lot of stress in the world right now, and a lot of people just can't take it, you know what I mean? And, like, the... The solid ones are gonna move through it, you know, and that's what it's looking like right now. It's crazy, but like through all the bullshit, I met the best things I ever happened in my life. Yeah, straight up. That's what's up, man. Definitely. You say you got some big stuff going on now. Huge. Yeah, you don't yeah. want to talk about that. I do. Can you not? Talk but about I, that? I can't talk mm-hmm. about everything. Legally. Not really legally, but like on some like. It's like, not smart. Like I like uh. I like channeling my energy and like I feel like if I talk about that before I do it, like it's gonna like not mess it up or anything, but like maybe it won't go how it should have. Jinx it. You know what I'm saying? Not really even jinx it because I got it. The thing is like everything was supposed to happen right before coronavirus and then like right now to meet like with like people that are like upper echelon right now is like not the time because like they literally can't risk anything right now yeah. while every, with everything that's going on. So like... I still got contact with my peoples that are my peoples to those peoples. And like I've been talking to them and vibing with them and making everything happen, you know what I'm saying? But um to take that next step, I'm just waiting for everything to pass right now. I'm working on my music, you know what I mean? And um I send that over to them and they they already know what time it is and it, it, we're about to get the word soon. So it's crazy, man. Like um I don't want to put no names out there, you know what I mean? But my manager looking out, connecting dots for me. I got two new producers that are in there, in there, looking out, you know what I mean? I got 
obviously cello shout out cello music that's my brother you know what i mean like me and him we only work with each other you know what i'm saying we support each other's music like we are the only two artists out of key west that have like done like a massive amount of things out of key west you know what i mean like and that's like real like i'm not even like that's just like on some real stuff like we grew up together went to high school together chilled together you know what i'm saying All, every day talking about like yo what we gonna do like what what different what's gonna make us stand out what we gonna do and like i, I wanted to be a rapper he wanted to be a dj you know what i'm saying he's performing at the ritz at edc at okeechobee at uh everything bro every big festival all that like and before all that like i invest in his dreams you know what i'm saying because i wanted to see him be successful you know what i'm saying and he's whenever i need beats whenever i need anything whenever i need whatever dog he got me too so like you know what i mean that's how you help each other grow you know what i'm saying and and the reason why a lot of people like we were talking about earlier can't do that is because they literally don't want to see someone else successful like they want to be the only person who's winning and let me tell you something when you're the only person who's winning you ain't winning yeah, I don't think Does that make sense? Just, I don't think people like like everybody who you see that's actually up like that. They got a bunch of successful people like around them. Team, you feel me? Definitely got a team. They don't even the people who you just see by themselves, like uh, little Boosie, mm -hmm. me. That, you know they're gonna have a whole gang yeah. of people around them. You feel like, me? Like I, when I'm in the studio, like besides when I just go like on some like real deal like locked in like super duper locked in to the point where like I don't want nobody there like locked in like on some J. Cole shit like I'll, be, I'll take my wife with me you know but like when I'm there and like it's work and it's grind time I got solo right there producing beats while I'm in the booth recording on the beat and he's got the next beat ready for me by the time I get out and I do the next song right there and he has another beat ready for me and I get the beat and I go back in and I do another song he gets another beat ready for me I go back in I do another song like that and then I got but my boy. What do you get that you have this stuff written down like songs ready to nah. go with beats? Nah. So you're just nah. rhyming? And everything. He freestyles the beat and I freestyle the song right there. You freestyle a song. You never think to write the song. I do write the songs too. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Like, it's usually more like I have a, a like a, a format I want. You know what I mean? I and I do a song off of that. You know what I mean? If that makes sense. Like I come up with like the melody in my head. Like as my boys making the beat type deal. And I come up with like maybe like the hook and then go in there and just like ride it, like ride it out. You know what I mean? I got very. I got like. Maybe out of my 50 songs, like 10 of them are actually like the whole song is written. Like, I feel like you, a couple of your songs, like I think you, I felt like when I listened to it, like your music had grown like uh, like over the years, you know, like uh, from where you first began. Cause you know, I know you, I've seen you grow up and whatnot. Mm -hmm. I know you before you even made a rap song, you yeah. feel me? And I can remember when you first started rapping and some of the stuff that I heard as of lately, you know, I, I was like, damn, that's some bangers right there. You know, they got to, you got to get them out there. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, um, one of them, you talk about some, something with Sublime. Mm -hmm. yeah. All these thoughts racing through yeah. my fucking mind all the time. Got a bad, bad, bad bitch riding by my side. When she ride on the dick, yeah, she sound like Sublime. Take a shot off her stomach, then I chase it with some line. Yes. Little white bitch, Shawty said that she let her line. Said she <laughs> fuck with Lil Risky, cause I in this prime. My life's a fucking movie, I get money all the time. Bad bitch fucking with me tell by the signs. I ain't never yeah, made the best one. decisions. That shit go hard. That shit yeah, go hard. you know, I feel like, you know what I mean? Like, uh, that, you know what I mean? Like, that is on another level. Yeah. It definitely needs to be out there, you know what I mean? She probably push some, push, she probably should put some money behind that song, man. That's what I'm gonna do. Get it out there, man, for sure. I did, I did that song in the studio right there. No, with my wife. My wife was there throughout that. Backstory to that song real quick. Her name is Jeannie. And the name of the song is Wishes. So like, she's a genie okay. that grants my wishes. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So you dedicated to her? And uh, I made that song because of her. I would have never made that song if I never met her. Points tonight, boy. Go ahead. Mm. Uh, you know what I'm saying? You're trying again. When she riding on the beach, she's been coming on the side. <laughs> oh, <laughs> man. Like, I started in my bedroom, like, in high school, you know? Yeah. Like, that's how I started, just making music like this right here. A little computer, a little microphone, wrap it, put the beat on there from YouTube. Yeah, but you've like always that. been and like I have, into shit. I have shit. someone, yeah, I've done you know, Photoshop, I've done shoot Premiere, videos, I shoot videos, I did... First lots. music video I ever shot yeah. was with you. Definitely, man. That dude need to bring his ass out of retirement. Yeah, he needs to start rapping again. Definitely need you to need start, start rapping, rapping again, again, Darius. 
<laughs> and um, anyways, so like, yeah, man, like I started rapping in my room and like all those videos, I have someone hold a camera for me. I do rap in front of the camera. I make the video myself and then put it out. And uh, people hated them. <laughs> like yeah. they literally hated them. I loved it though. I didn't care yeah, if a thousand so. people disliked me. You know what I'm saying? Like it was just a fact that like I did it and it was out and like people could laugh at it or have fun or listen to it or do whatever they wanted to do with it. You know what I'm saying? And then I was like, damn, you know, I could really do something with this. And then uh, like we all went to Francois like once or twice, once or twice, me and Jesse. And then I was like, bro, nah, that ain't it. And I was like, uh. We could really do something with this. And like, I remember everyone at the bar said, nah, you can't do it. You can't do it. And that like fuels me. It's always fueled me. Like, I even got like, when, when dad thought I couldn't make money playing video games, and I was like, nah, I can do this. And I made like a couple stacks playing video games, like, because he told me I couldn't do it. You know what I mean? And like, um, I grew up out of that, but like, um, I, I started cutting hair in Miami, right? When I moved to Miami to go to barber school. Um, Mind you, this is while my parents are couch surfing. Every friend they know, they're like out of it. You know what I'm saying? Like they literally, like they're going through the hardest time of their life pretty much. They just lost the house, everything's crazy. And I met this dude, Kevis, shout out Kevis. Um, cool ass dude, awesome dude. He had a little home studio in Miami. And I was working with him just messing around and that's one of the first times I shot like my first little videos and I was like just messing around myself. Those hit like a thousand views, like just me sharing them to people and just like putting it out on Facebook and SoundCloud and YouTube, you know what I mean? I didn't put none of those on Apple Music or nothing. I knew I wasn't ready for it yet. So I was like, let me just keep messing around, keep messing around, whatever, and I'm, I'm going to just start getting it, right? And I just freestyle every day. At school, in the car, at home, everywhere, all the time. Go to his house, rap, make them songs, put them out on SoundCloud, messing around, whatever. That's how I knew I was like, okay, I'm nasty, right? And then... um. When I thought I got nasty, I, I felt like I outgrew that, you know what I mean? I told you, yo, Kevin, you my dog, da da da. I got to start going to the real studio. And then uh, I talked to one of uh, my boys. I mean, he's, not, he's more my boy now than my dad's boy. <laughs> but he was one of my dad's old homies uh, from way back. And uh, I talked to Jesse about Young Simi. Like, yo, let's get, you got that connection. Like, let's get that shit going. And then we went to the first studio big actual like studio I went to which was Outbreak Media Group in Miami and um, those shout out Epidemic and Della Candela um, those are my brothers you know what I mean and like they believed in me with that song that shit hit 40,000 views on YouTube you know what I mean fucking put my mom in the video first thing first bar and that's the most important thing in the world to me you know what I'm saying and like I really like I, I, I love this shit you know what I mean I'm trying to get a deal so I can feed my family and they ain't ever gotta worry about a meal again you know what I'm saying Definitely. and um like I just I put so much into it like that happened and once I did that song with Simi Simi's been on World Star. Simi knows Denzel Curry Simi Simi been on Rolling Loud he know everybody in the game once I got that done I was like bro there's nothing I can't do ain't nothing I can't do you know what I'm saying like uh, so I, I did like that, and then ne my next session, I booked it at uh, Mixmaster Studios through my dog Della. Um, and like, I'm really in there with the owner and stuff now too. That's my dog. Shout out JP. Um, Hayes. Shout out Hayes. And uh, they put me down with someone. You know what I'm saying? And like I was working, 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 working. I dropped my first album, uh, which had no winning on it. That first album hit like, I think it was like 20,000, like 20 to like 30,000 streams on all platforms, like all together. So like, that was my first album. And then I dropped my second album, which was nothing to prove. And that one hit, that one like, bro, that one hit like over 100,000 streams on all platforms by itself. And then like that one, I put a bunch of promotion on like different pages on Instagram. Uh, and that's the mean? one you, you, you about to put out again. Bring out, bring back and combine it with my other album. Okay. That I just dropped. And then um then after that, you know what I mean I was like, damn, you know, it's nice, like yeah, it's giving some buzz. People are actually listening to it, but like what's gonna take me to the next level, right? And I was working on something to prove it, solo, completely produced by Marcel, my brother, and um he did every track on the album and I'm talking I was in the booth and by the time he made the beat, I was back in the booth rapping the whole album. Like that whole album was freestyle top to bottom. 
and the hit that I thought was the hit on the song, I mean on the album, uh, I had been on these uh, No Jumper lives. You know I've been on No Jumper, so No Jumper is the biggest hip hop podcast in the world right now. Um, I went, I was going on his lives for like six months, bro. Like since I had dropped No Fear, like since I dropped my album before my album before that. You know what I'm saying? Like, or it was like almost a year. Like, on, it was like 10 months. Like, something like that. And, bro, like, I was in his live. Every single live he did. Like, everyone. Like, oh, it's $100 to donate for you to listen to my song and review it. It's $100, that's all. All right. Bomb. Listen to that song. Tell me what you think about it. That's one of and the, the next time, that I want. And the next time he was in it, another $100. All right, listen to that one. Okay, the next time he was in it. Another hundred dollars. Listen, I he did them like every week. So every week I was just in there throwing him another song, and then one day uh, I did Tommy Bill figure, and like I really like picked it up from my last stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like my last stuff was great. You know what I mean? But then I like had the Beamer ice cream truck. I was in Miami, like with the whole city, like really representing. I had Della in it. Della, if you don't know Della Candela, like he's been he was on DJ Khaled's first mixtape with Rick Ross. Like that was like. Like crazy, you know what I mean? And that's my boy. He believes in me, you know what I'm saying? Like on some real like man, man, shit. He believe he believe in my music, you know what I'm saying? He thinks I'm one of the hardest rappers coming out of Florida right now, and he literally believes that, and like I believe it too, you know what I'm saying? And that's not like talking about any artists. There's great artists out here, you know what I'm saying? But it's like I've been working, you know, and like Adam, when I put that one on his live, I was like, oh, this is one, and I flexed on. Right? I did a big flex, so I was like, fuck, I, I, I can keep donating. So I took the video with the $100, and then I sent him like seven more hundred. And then he put the video up? And he called me. He called I was you. the biggest donator ever on No Jumpers live stream. He called you, huh? He called me. Right there on live stream, called me. Yo, I want to put your video on my YouTube channel. It was lit, it's fire, and I can see you want it, and you work, and you ain't scared to put your all into it, you know what I'm saying? Who just goes on a live stream and donates eight hundred dollars? Like, yeah. And put it up. The video right now, you go right now on YouTube. One hundred sixteen thousand views. You get paid. Thousand. You thousand, get paid for yeah, that. I got. Yeah. Right, so the way uh, music monetization works, right? With music, you have a distributor. So I got my publisher and my distributors, TuneCore, right? They recognize any song that gets put out on any platform. So on YouTube, if you go to the, to No Jumper, it'll say Tommy Bill figure risky, risky blunt. And since it recognizes it, the money comes to me. So my album, just off that song, got 116,000 views. Just off one song. So yes, my album, I hit over 500,000 streams on that album sure. on all platforms. And I got people in Korea, people in France, people in Texas, people in Cali, people in New York, people in Georgia, people in Tennessee, everywhere hitting me up and being like, yo, like, it's just crazy. Like, I, I did a live while I did that, when my uh, song dropped on No Jumper, I had 623 people in my life. You know what I'm saying? And like, I recognize like, people can hate on you, bro. Like, I had, I got like, probably 3,000 likes on there and like 2,000 dislikes and like 700 or 800 comments or something like that and like half is good and half is bad. You know what I'm saying? And that like, don't, that don't discourage you got, you. no, not at all. You know what I mean? Why? Because the people who took the time to go in the front, the, the people who took the time to go in the description and click on my Instagram link were people who liked the song. So it was like real genuine like people who like actually took the time to not just go to the comments and talk shit. They actually went to the description and look, looked at my shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I feel like some artists really care too much about what other people think. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like uh, it's something that you love. It's art. You know yeah. what I mean? It's like for me, I love what I do and I don't care who don't like it. You know what I mean? That's I don't give a damn. You know, it's mine. If you don't yeah. like it, you don't got to look at so, it. So, know? real quick. The Mona Lisa. I think that's a good painting. Oh, um, is that the? Is that Mona like Lisa, this, it's a girl. This is like, looks like, yeah, it looks mad kind of. I mean, I don't know. It's one of the most. All right, it's not even like a crazy like, looking painting like that. But guess mm -hmm. what? It's one of the most expensive paintings that are even around. Yeah. Like they got armed guards securing that, so it don't matter what anyone like and what they don't like. It yeah, matters what it is. You know what I'm saying? 
Like, what it is is what matters, you know what I'm saying? So, you can hate me, your mom can hate me, your grandma can hate me, but if all your friends think I'm wrong, yeah. I'm doing something right, you know what I'm saying? And, like, even if you put in that energy, like, I had a lot of people, too, on my, on my Instagram and just, like, bashing my shit, you yeah. know what I'm saying? And, like, and like it just fueled me more. It's, like, kind of like when your dad tells you you can't be something or your mom yeah. tells you you ain't good enough or, like, someone says you ain't raw or, like, your teacher says you can't do it. Yeah. It's the same thing. It's every, you gotta look at every one of those people like a positive. Yeah, they're stepping stone. They're if, they, if, if, if it's so bad, why are you on my stuff wasting your time? Yeah. Yeah. Why are you wasting your time and your energy on my stuff if it's so bad? I'm doing something right. Man. You know what I'm saying? So, so what's next, man? I mean, you know, COVID, uh, did you have shit like tours and shit set up before COVID? I did, hit? bro. Yeah. I did. I had another flow to talk about. So and, uh, what what do you do now, like uh, since that hit, like videos. you just in, in limbo, kind of just make videos. You do what and, you can, man. Yeah. So what can you do? People like, like Gucci Man said, right? How rappers going broke and blame Corona as the reason. You know what I'm saying? Like you only broke if you want to be broke. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah, it's a mindset. You know what I'm saying? So like I haven't let it stop me. I haven't been like, oh, this shit sucks. I ain't gonna do nothing. I can't do nothing. This sucks. Nah, like I've been like, what can I do? What's yeah. positive? I got time to work on my my, my, my music. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, what actually matters? Like, when you're doing shows and stuff, yeah, it's great. You're doing shows. You're connecting with fans. You're talking to people. You're networking. But you don't really got a lot of time to work on your music when you're driving around doing shows. Yeah. I can really work on my music and really get in there and make the best content I can, you know what I mean? And really make the videos the best videos I can, you know what I mean? Because there's literally like nothing going on. So what can I do? I can work on myself. What else you want to talk about before we wrap it up? Um, I just, I kind of want to like, you know, shout out everybody and talk about, you know, what I got coming. And so shout out Della Gandela, shout out Marcel, Cello Music. Shout out the Molly, the Real Burger Experience. Oh, thank you, you know what I'm saying? Definitely. Um, we talked about Brothers Liddy Show. Shout out to Brothers Liddy Show. Yep. Shout out to Mix Masters. That's home base. Uh, no Shout out to Rebel 11. Shout out No Jumper, bro. They fucking helped me out for real. Um, I still got that contact, so expect more on there. Yeah, I watched uh, both of them, the Brother Liddy and No Jumper, just to get some inspiration for some of my podcast, man. So definitely shout out to both of them, man. Yeah, shout out to. Uh, Bro, shout out to, uh, who else, who else? Shout out to Lewis, that's my dog, you know what I'm saying? He take all my pictures whenever I go anywhere. Like, Man, you ain't even say Jay Moolah. Shout out Jay Moolah, too. Jay I was Moolah there. jump on I'm the back. I, the first person shout out in the whole video was Jay Moolah. That's my brother, man. So it. shout out Jesse, man, all the way out there in Georgia. That's my brother right there, for real, for real. Shout out my wife. Shout out my family. Shout out Stock on the Face. Shout out. All my chicos, shout out all my brothers, shout out everybody, you know what I'm saying? The whole yeah. human race, you know what I'm saying? Um, if you don't know me, my name is Risky on Instagram. Literally just like that, R-I-S-K-Y. I got the OG at, just like that, R-I-S-K-Y on Instagram. On all platforms, it's Risky Blunt, R-I-S-K-Y-B-O-U-N-T. I got Lice, uh, none approved Lice Risky coming on the way. The deluxe like when, and the album Lice they, Risky. You know, one can we kind of estimate that to come out. 10 10 2020. 10 10 2020. That's the date, y'all. Y'all heard it. 26 tracks, three visualizers, and three videos. Two more that I've been worked on. Um, you know what I'm saying? I got a lot of stuff coming, man. It's beautiful. It's all unfolding. How it's supposed to be. So you guys stay tuned. Definitely, man. Risky Blunt, I want to thank you for coming through. You know it's been saying? definitely an awesome interview, man. How you feeling? I'm feeling great, bro. Feeling like I'm about to go make some more music. Yeah, so, you're yeah. inspired? Yeah, man. I've always been inspired. Man. That's what's up, man. I'm definitely, yeah. man. So thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for watching the show today. Thank you, Risky Blunt, for coming through. DP, Risky Blunt. Yeah, Out.